Welcome back to another chess game analysis video. So I'm quite excited to show you a very nice game that I played in the Swiss League, which started again the new season. Um, it's a classical time format. We're playing with six people on six boards. And I'm playing with the black pieces here on the second board. And um, my opponent, I respected a lot that he had 1850 ELO, which is quite high for me. I normally only play against 700s, uh, 1700s, obviously. Um, so I was a little bit surprised by his opening choice, which we're going to see, but um, I think generally a very interesting game also, and would be very uh, suitable for, an, um, for a series on how to punish opening mistakes. Um, knight f6, standard to plan at knight f3. d5, so I thought maybe he's going for a London system, but he goes for e3, maybe like a color system. From f5 development, c4, correct strike in the center, e6. And here the first inaccuracy, I think this knight move knight e5 I didn't like it in the game and the engine doesn't like it either. It has a concrete idea behind it, but the idea is not that great actually. Knight bd7, and very very standard move, just development challenging the knight in the center. And now I was shocked when I uh, when I saw this move on the board, g4. Um, a complete berserk move, I want to say. Uh, the move isn't that great. Um, the idea behind the move, which my opponent, because we talked after the game, is if I just go back, then he takes the bishop, and like h t pawn takes, and then bishop g2. Pawn is defended. He has a nice pressure against my center. Knight maybe comes here, and he wanted to play this position, which I still think is a little bit better for black, but this was his idea. Problem is there are already tactics in the position on the sixth move, which shows that this is not theory. It's not a great uh, system, and I'm not sure if he has ever played this before. But um, I like the, the way that he like the aggressive way to try something um, immediately. But unfortunately, tactically it fails. Here I already saw like how I can force in a very direct way um, continue this game. Um, but I realized this. The, Pawn is protected by two pieces. Quick tactical uh, input here. Knight and Queen. And it's attacked twice, so it's already weak, you know. Now it attacks something, but generally it's weak, I want to capture it, obviously. Um, so now I can't, I can't capture it immediately. So I was like, okay, I can um, eliminate one of my, um, of the attackers at some point, but then he captures here. This would also be possible, by the way, Knight takes e5. Um, so I was like, okay, one defender can be eliminated. How can I distract or capture, probably distract the queen? And then I realized quickly that I could just um, play the... Um, I could play bishop b4. And if the, if the bishop blocks the check and the queen takes, the queen doesn't defend the pawn anymore. But if you play it immediately then you can block with the bishop, and if I take, the knight can recapture. And so, after a little bit of thinking, I played the move bishop takes b1, which is a very good move. I didn't like capturing the knight, which has never moved in the game, but obviously um, it is justified very concrete position in this position. Rook takes b1. Um, I quickly wanted to show you what happens if you just take the knight here. Um, you could try to exchange the knight first. Then bishop e4 attacks the rook. In between move you take the knight, queen takes, rook g1 and something like bishop d6. And I'm not sure my opponent liked this position. It looks a bit very strange. Bishop pair very active in the center of the board. So probably this is why you can't exchange the knight here. So my opponent correct uh, correctly. Rook takes b1, took the, the bishop. But now the whole combination that I just, I just wanted to show you works. Bishop b4 check. Bishop blocks to check. And now the knight can't capture the bishop anymore. So now after bishop takes d2, the king or the queen have to, have to capture. My opponent actually took with the king, which is better according to the engine on, on high depth. But both moves are already minus 2, so black is already way better. Queen takes, I quickly want to show you. Then... This is what I had calculated before the whole, before I took here on b1, I had calculated that um, after the queen is here, 
then I can eliminate knight takes e5, the defender of the g pawn. After d takes, uh, I can take with the knight. The queen comes in here, the e pawn is hanging. I won a pawn already. Um, this has to be better for me, and it is. So my opponent evaluated that the same he took with the king, which is not much better because knight takes e5, the same motive, d takes e5, and now um, the queen is guarding this pawn, but the problem is now that I, can, I have very nasty move. d takes e4, winning a pawn with check. Discover check, the queen and the king are now aligned. King e2. And here I'm quite proud that I found a very interesting move actually. The engine already says you can take here and win another pawn. Um, queen takes d1. I wanted to queen trade first, but after rook takes d1, knight takes g4, f4. I didn't like that the pawn was protected. The king is here protecting this pawn. The rook comes on the open file. He kind of gets some counterplay, which I didn't want to do. So I didn't want a queen to aid immediately, but I wanted to force him into a queen to aid, so I play queen d3. A very poisonous move um, quickly, um, but he basically has to queen trade. If uh, there are no real alternatives, I, I thought quickly um, this would have been maybe possible, but it loses the rook. Um, if you go back, um, then there is queen e4 as well, it takes the rook. Um, the knight that takes here comes in here. Maybe just a rook comes or the long castles or the rook comes in here. It's minus six. This is this is complete disaster position. So I realized that after uh, queen d3 he had to take with the queen. I took with the pawn. Now again the pawn moved even once uh, like once more and very strong here. And basically I calculated what happens after king takes d3. What was the idea of actually um not immediately queen trading, but um, luring the king to uh, to d3. Knight takes g4, and now the king is not on e2, so it doesn't defend this pawn. And f4 doesn't work here because you can you just you're just being forked basically. This was my idea, and um, if you go back to defend the fork, or if you move the rook, then I cap capture here with check. So basically, the king here is exposed to these two checks. And it was not on e2, which is the justification why I, I played this queen d3 move. Uh, I wanted to sacrifice this pawn here, and then the king is on a worse square, and I can afterwards fork it, which I'm kind of, um, I like this idea. It's, um, you can play like an engine and very forced, but I think it was very venomous for him. Um, this way that I played it, queen d3 check, and then the pawn here on on d3, which is going to be a problem for the rest of the game. He realized this and he played king f3, not taking the pawn, which I think I didn't realize that he could actually do this, but very strong idea. He defends this pawn and he's like, okay, at some point I might capture this pawn. Um, a good attempt here for my opponent, definitely. Now my knight finally is attacked um, here on f6, so I have to move it to uh, knight seven. Uh, attacks the pawn, but now he's ready king e4 to defend this pawn. And so basically we have a position where I'm up a pawn, a very nasty, nice advanced pawn, and he's got problems king in the center. For the end game, probably a good idea, but here there are too many tactics still. The king is not ideally placed here. I long castled with the justification that he can't win this pawn if bishop takes the free knight c5 check and the rook is now here and the bishop is lost so you lose a piece so you can't take the pawn and maybe i thought maybe the king can capture but then i just take and then i win this pawn and basically i give back one pawn and i win back two pawns which would be in general uh, like generally i would be up two pawns then i think I was like, okay, the, 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 the pawn is off limits, he can't take it. He pushed f4, which is a good attempt. He now has a 5 against 4 majority, very strong uh, pawns here in the center. Um, now the pawn supports the, the other pawn, and maybe the king is now ready to capture. Um, you see in this position, I had to play very dynamic. I have to play very forced. Always check, 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 force him, see that he doesn't take anything, and... Um, now I played knight c5 check, forcing the king back. Now the knight also very nicely defends the pawn, which is now my asset in this game. Now I 
heavily rely on this pawn to win the game. Um, he played. I played rook d5. Now it's very simple chess. I try to do, to um, bring everything behind the pawn and then push it. And very nice with this pawn. The problem is he wants to control this square. This is the queening square. So if I ever push too too early, he blocks with the bishop. Bishop comes here and then the queening square is very nicely protected. And with the pawn here, the bishop can't really come here because it just gets captured. So this rook has, has a hard time participating. The bishop has a hard time participating. Now the king is cut off from the action. Um, a very hard position for him to play in this position, in this, um, in this situation. Rook d5, just simple development move, trying to double the, the rooks on the d file, b5, uh, b4. There, there were alternatives. The engine wants to develop the bishop to g2 and at some point maybe hack the rook, do something here. A little bit active, also the rooks are now connected and control the, the queening square, but b4. Problem is now the knight comes in here. So the b-pawn is no longer guarding this square, so the knight can come in here. I played, he played e4, picking the rook, but I don't really mind. I played rook d4, king e2, e3. Um, sometimes there were transpositions of move orders, that's why I'm sometimes a little bit hesitating. But king e3, rook hd8, and I was a little bit afraid here that he, he might just block with the king. But the problem is these pawns are all aligned. I can just try to grab all of them and... Or maybe even come in here. The, that's like the engine's favorite recommendation. I hadn't seen this, but I was like, okay, all these pawns are gonna fall if you just block with the king. But I was a little bit afraid of this. He played rook b3, which um, I wasn't so afraid of. I didn't even see this move because I was like, okay, d2 is now possible. The pawn really is an asset now. Um, now, of course, the threat is just queen. Um, and something like this now doesn't work because the rook is now here, you just queen. The engine wants to play <laughs> d1 knight. <laughs> doesn't really matter. You just win. Um, king has to move, knight goes back. You're up a knight here in this position, still with a very nice active chance to play this position. Um, my opponent uh, saw this after d2 and he played bishop d3, now cutting off the two rooks from the action. Which I think is a very interesting approach. I had not seen this move and when I came back to the board. There are still options to play this position. Um, one of the moves I hadn't really seen is just knight takes, um, knight b, b2 attacks the bishop and if, it, if captures then captures and very active position still um, here. You could have played this like that. Um, I didn't really see this, um, this distraction motive with knight b2. I played it more fast, um, and I liked the way that I played it a lot. Um, I played c5. I think on everything calculated, um, and the ones I calculated really well here, and I quickly analyzed for you everything that I calculated in the game, the possibilities. Um, let's say, say if he doesn't take the pawn, if he just moves, then I have a very simple fork with the pawn forking a piece and the rook and this is basically over. So he probably can't push here. Um, if he takes here, then um, rook. And this is an interesting line. Um, actually, if you, if you take here, this is like the main move that I calculated. Afterwards, my opponent pointed out knight takes c5 is just winning, um, which is why he didn't uh, take on c5. I didn't even see this move. I, I calculated something entirely different, which is also winning and it simplifies a lot into an endgame. I would have sacrificed the exchange here. Rook takes d3, check. Basically forced the rook to take. Then rook takes d3, check. King basically has to take. d1 rook or queen, but for the illustration purpose, it is absolutely the same. The rook has to, has to take, and now you have this very nice knight b2 check, picking up the rook. And now you have king c6, uh, 7. You see, I'm still up. Um, he's still up a pawn here. In this position, I actually sacrificed a little bit something. But king c2, king c6, 
king c3, I win back one of the pawns. And he has um, a queen side, a queen side majority, five to four, but he can never break through. And maybe I'm I'm having a, a known end game episode um, on the channel if you want to, where I analyze exactly this position. But I had this in mind, and because I spent a little bit of time in the last few weeks analyzing end games, I knew that this was winning. And for instance, b5, a3, a5, h5, b4 check. I retreat the pawns. King d4, king takes b4, and now the white king is basically cut off, and I just win a couple of pawns here. This is winning. So when, what I had in mind here after in this position, I had this position in my... I visualized this position after king takes c5, and I evaluated this as winning, So, uh, which is correct. It's minus 8 at this point, and you can't defend this, um, which would have been the variation that I went in. I would have gone into... Um, Bishop, if he had to, if he had taken the pawn, I would have sacrificed the exchange here, sacrificed everything, d1 rook, trading off everything, and went to, going into a pawn and came. Um, always in just if you see forced variations that you think are winning, like trading off into a, a one pawn and game, you should always do this. Um, but there are fewer risks, I think. In this position, I would have won this definitely. Um, then what happened in the game, I think. Um, Game was the game was also pretty smooth in general, but I think I would have liked if he took if he took the pawn, then I sacrificed the rook. Um, an alternative would have been um, let me quickly check. An alternative would have been rook d1, um, locking the queening square. But then again, I would have sacrificed the exchange, and I can't queen uh, here. But the same fork still works. He's about to lose a rook, so king takes d2, knight takes d one king takes now i because he didn't take i even i even have a pawn more here and king c2 king c7 king d3 king c6 king c4 i defend the pawn he has to do something i kick away the king and this is also a winning position um i was even more confident that this is winning and it is so uh, basically uh, maybe there are other alternatives after c5 but i mainly calculated what happens um, if he does nothing, there is a fork. If um, he moves the rook away, he could move the rook away, but the bishop is unoffended. Uh, pushing doesn't work, capturing doesn't work, um, blocking the queening square doesn't work. So c5 was the way that I um, went for this. There are alternative moves in this position, but I think a very smooth way. And I'm kind of uh, proud that I found this very strong continuation. My opponent calculated all of this as well, um, even though he calculated here after b takes um not rook takes but just the knight fork which is winning um so after c5 he decided to go bishop b5 attacks the knight and now obviously you can already uh queen and stuff but i was i went c4 i didn't want uh, the bishop at some point to to have impact here attacks the rook um i thought maybe first before queening winning the exchange if he takes here i take here rook a3 he goes away um, by the way, if he just takes the rook, I would have been happy to just take the rook. Uh, if he takes the knight, I take the rook. Bishop takes, I queen, and after everything is said and done, I just, I'm up a rook. So I realized that um, it's not really, you can take the knight, but uh, it's not a great move. So he decided rook a3 would have been the move. And now you can win straight forward knight with knight b2. Uh, covering the, the queening square and saving the knight at the same time. Very straightforward win. I played it a little bit differently. Um, it's also very, very much equal, but I just want to show you sometimes the easier solutions because, as you saw with the trading down in the queen end game, um, in the pawn end game, sometimes I calculate something which is winning for me, but there would have been easier alternatives. But this is just. Illustrative purposes, rook takes d3, forced rook takes d3, king f2. Uh, interesting as well, if he wants to to um, um, have the queening square covered, there is a very nasty fork, which forks, forks, and forks the bishop as well, so this is completely lost. Um, so he played very nicely, king, king f2. I think generally he had very good resistance, like he fought quite hard. Uh, knight c3, bishop takes pawn, d1, queen. Um, I mean, he, he even if it's lost from 
like the tenth move or so, I think he played very nicely and he didn't like just um how do you say get depressed or something and play bad moves and then lose completely. But he really fought quite hard, which is probably also why he has a good rating. Problem is uh, here in this position, the the rook that uh, the queen basic this combination overloads this combination. So um, if you take the uh, the queen, then the rook takes, which happened in the game. And if you take the rook, then you can basically choose choose what to take. You could have taken just the rook, and this is a, a forced mate in eight. So after this combination, d1 queen, he took the queen. I take took the rook, and I'm up an entire rook. And here he resigned the game because there's nothing he can do here. I'm um, just up a hook and this is winning. So I think a very flawless game. I'm kind of proud and um, excited that I played this so nicely. Um, the calculations were very much um, correct and everything. Um, you see, this the opening was kind of punished with this g4. Um, g4, a, a move that you can hardly ever play. Not a good one, um, generally, uh, especially in the beginning, like Grub Gambit or here in this position. Way too forced, it was not necessary here, and it got punished. Um, I hope you like this game, a very tactical game this time, not so much strategy, but a lot of calculation, a lot of variation. Um, if you have games that you played yourself and you want me to analyze them, feel free to send them to me. Check out the Leeches Community Study in the description. Check out my stream where I regularly stream chess and Macabellum, Rocket League and so on. Check out my Instagram, everything in the description and see you in the next video. Bye.